Crocodiles and alligators are two animals that are frequently misidentified. Go to any zoo and you'll have people calling alligators crocodiles and crocodiles alligators. If you were to go up to a zookeeper at said zoo or almost any animal expert and ask them how do you tell the difference between the two, the simplest answer you're going to get is look at the snout. If the snout of the animal is broad and u-shaped, it's an alligator. If it's thinner and v-shaped, it's a crocodile. If you were to go to the Florida Everglades, which has both the American alligator and American crocodile, this would work. Based on what I said, you should all know if these snouts belong to alligators or crocodiles based on the snout shape. If you paid attention, you should all be thinking alligators, and you would be wrong. Contrary to what many will tell you, there are indeed species of crocodiles with naturally broad snouts. These include the mugger crocodile, the African dwarf crocs, the Siamese crocodile, and to some extent the Morlets crocodile. Here is the skull of a Morlets crocodile compared to an American crocodile skull to give you a better idea between the vast differences in their snout shapes. Another reason a crocodile snout may be broad and U-shaped is because of its size. When a crocodile puts on weight, many times the skull of the animal gets thicker and broader over time. So while a crocodile may start out with a thinner V-shaped snout, as it grows it may obtain a broader snout like an alligator. This mainly occurs with males. You can see this commonly occurring with saltwater and Nile crocodiles, for example. However, there is the very slight chance of this even happening to an American crocodile. American crocodiles, even when they do put on a decent amount of weight, still have a V-shaped snout. It's just a broad V. But there is at least one American crocodile I'm aware of with a really broad snout. This here is Goliath, an American croc at Gator Rama. He is around 14 feet long and is definitely a huge animal. You'll notice his head is not really V-shaped like what a species is known to have. I would say that this is a rare exception and perhaps is similar to how American alligators will have shorter, bulkier snouts compared to those in the wild. Still, this does prove that if an American crocodile gains enough weight, it'll have a broad snout like an alligator. Things get even more complicated when you add the caiman species into the mix. Caimans, while not true alligators, are part of the family Alligatoridae, which is the alligator family. Caiman snouts can vary from the appropriately named broad-snouted caiman to the thin-snouted Rio Epiporus caiman, a subspecies of the spectacled caiman. With all this in mind, the snout rule cannot be a conclusive way to tell alligators and crocodiles apart. If differences in snout shape are not due to cladistic or taxonomic reasons, why are there different snouts for different species? The main theory has to do with the hunting lifestyle of the animal. Larger, thicker jaws are thought to allow a crocodilian to tackle larger prey such as a zebra or crushed shells like a crustacean. Basically, these larger jaws allow for more crushing power. On the other side, thinner snouts would be more associated with speed. If a crocodilian is hunting underwater and is trying to catch aquatic prey like a fish, a thinner snout would be more hydrodynamic and cut through the water faster, allowing the animal to catch its prey quicker. This is what the thought has been for a long time, but it's not a 100% concrete theory. For one, even with broad snout animals, aquatic prey such as fish still make up a decent portion of their diet. You also have the Temistema, a thin snout species that is known to eat monkeys as one of their regular prey items. There is even a report of one attacking a cow and at least one confirmed case of one eating an adult human. Bottom line, snout diversity is something that we're still trying to figure out when it comes to crocodilians. To get back to where we started, how do you tell the difference between alligators and crocodiles? Here are the ways that will work. Number one, the teeth. If you only see the animal's top set of teeth while the jaws are closed, it's an alligator. If you see both the top and bottom sets interlock, it's a crocodile. If the crocodilian has metabolic bone disease and sprawled teeth, this may hinder this method, but is still helpful with healthy individuals. Number two, the tongue. If you were to look at the tongue of crocodiles, you would notice they have salt glands on their tongues which allow them to tolerate salt water. Alligators do not have salt glands. That's not to say you would never see an alligator in the ocean, but it's not going to survive long. Some crocodile species even have a greater tolerance compared to others, like the appropriately named saltwater crocodile and American crocodile. The third and final method is based on their integumentary sense organs. If you were to look at a crocodilian's jaws, you would see these tiny black dots scattered on the scales. They are called integumentary sense organs, or ISOs. They help the crocodilian sense vibrations in the water when looking for prey. For alligators, they only have them on their jawline, while crocodiles have them throughout their entire body. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy the book A Guide to Identifying Crocodilians of the World. From the humongous saltwater crocodile to the strange Indian gharial, discover the defining characteristics of every crocodilian. 
Written by Jen and John Bruggen of the St. Augustine Alligator Farm, the book teaches you how to identify every species of crocodilian in a simple manner so anyone can learn. It even includes the recently discovered species. Buy a guide to identifying crocodilians of the world today. Link in description and comments to buy.